and we're on. All right. It's October. It's getting chilly outside. It is, right? Long rugby shirt. I know. I haven't had a hoodie, hoodie on. on in forever. I still yeah. have flip-flops on, though. I'm not yeah. giving in yet. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What you got for us this week? Crazy week, man. It was. It a was a crazy red. week. All red. Right across the board. Uh, we're definitely going to get into some of that. Uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a lot of things going on in the show. Let's get so to let's it. let's kick it off. So first things first, as you guys all know, we track uh, Investor's Business Daily, IBD, pretty closely. So the IBD market pulse changed from market under pressure to market in correction as of Thursday's close. With Friday's recovery day, that begins the count for a new uptrend. So every sustained rally has met the following conditions. All right. When these conditions are met, it doesn't mean that we're going to get a sustained rally. But every time we get a sustained rally, these conditions are present. Okay. When the market puts in a new low and then we get a reversal, that reversal day is day one of the count. Sometime between day four and day 10 of the new attempted rally, we need to see a 1.5% or more price move higher on one of the major indexes, right? NASDAQ, Dow Jones, S&P 500 one of the major indexes, and it has to be on volume bigger than the prior day. So th- that is the follow-through day. It has to happen between the fourth day and the tenth day of the rally attempt. If the low, right, the low on the reversal day from day one is undercut sometime between day four and day ten, then the count is scrapped and we start over. Make sense? Kind of. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's very specific IBD rules yeah. for, for when they say we're, we're going into new, a new uptrend. And uh, it doesn't always correspond with like the weekly charts that we do. You can't really see that on the weekly. But on, in terms of daily, because, uh, you know, everybody's trying to get into the, back into the stock funds as close to the, the bottom of a new confirmed uptrend as possible. Right. And this is the IBD methodology. Got it. All right. Okay. Market this week, red across the board. C fund down a little over 2%. S fund down 1.87%. I fund down t- over 2.5%. And F fund just barely down because it had a, had a pretty significant reversal at the end of the week, um, down two tenths of 1%. So, what we're going to do this week is do a review or see uh, the update of the big picture Elliott wave count. And I'm going to zoom in to a very short term chart and just kind of talk about that in terms of this four leg that we've been that we're in right now. And then we're gonna look at some ratio charts that I think will give us an an indication of where we're going kind of in the future. And we got two bonus charts, Bitcoin and Palantir. We've done both of them in the past and uh Bitcoin's breaking out, Palantir's breaking down, and it's a good example because I bought Palantir. I'm gonna show you where I bought it and where I sold it. And, and then we'll look at the 20-month weekly charts. Okay, so we put this slide up the last couple of weeks, but the link is really important. If you're looking for a link uh, that's kind of the cliff note version of Elliott, all things Elliott Wave, Fibonacci, and how they relate, um, this one site gives you all the rules, guidelines, impulse, and corrective patterns, Fibonacci's, all of it in one place. So definitely check it out. All right, so here we are with the updated uh, long-term Elliott wave count. So long-term basically being from the COVID bottom down here in March 2020 to where we are right now. So we've progressed in five waves. One, A, B, C is two, three, and we're in this four leg right now. So we still have room for further decline If we're looking at the chart, you got a whole bunch of support in that area right there. And you got a reversal right there. So just from looking at this weekly chart, 4,200 is a pretty good, pretty obvious support level on the chart. But even kind of as we're looking for prices to continue lower a little bit, a reversal could definitely be right around the corner. And we go much deeper into potential wave four price targets in the newsletter this weekend. So definitely check that out. Okay. 
So that was the long-term chart. Here's the very short-term chart. So let's go, here we are at the top. This is three, right? So let's go back and look at this real quick. This is three. So what we're doing is kind of zooming in to this part right here. So here's three. And we want to know how far four is going to go down. We don't know how far four is going to go down. We just said 4,200 is, is kind of a, a goal based on that weekly chart. But here, here's one thing I, I really wanted to, to point out. Um, there are no impulse waves here in this chart. So far, the wave four is just kind of a messy correction pattern. There's, there are no impulse waves either up or down. Uh, there's a lot of things we can label here, but nothing that really tips the scale as to whether, uh, whether or not the correction is over. So we had three up here. We came down in a pretty orderly one. This looks like it was going to be an ABC for two. But then we gapped down and reversed right back. And this high went into the one. You can't do that in the Elliott Wave Rules. So that means it's not an impulse wave down. So we had, if this is the low for one, this is higher than that, so the impulse wave down doesn't work. We get a gap. We came up and filled the gap and rolled back over and gapped again and ro rolled back down. So in terms of gaps, uh, trading the gaps, we could have done... We could have done that relatively well. We, if you remember also, I think we talked about it last week, this move right here is a 68% retracement from this overall move here. So the market rolled over at a, at a Fibonacci level, gapped down, came down, and now maybe we're doing a double bottom, right? So there's a lot of things we can look at and talk about on this chart, but everything is corrective. A move down, correct, move down, that's three. That's not an impulse. One, two, three, corrective. One, two, three, corrective. Which is good because we're, we want this to be a wave four. Um, well, it is the wave four. And so we would expect these kind of corrective patterns. If we started getting an impulse wave down um, to that 4,200 level, it, it, things would be kind of a little bit different. But it's kind of, it's, what I'm saying is it's good to see that even though price is moving lower, they're in corrective waves and not impulse waves. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Ratios. Extremely valuable tool in technical analysis, right? In terms of TSP, we can look at the ratio of the S or the I fund versus the C fund, for example, uh, to see which of the funds are outperforming the others. A great way to use ratios is to look at sectors within a larger index to see what's happening kind of below the surface. So we're going to look at two ratio charts. This one's an 18-month chart of consumer discretionary versus consumer staples. So discretionaries are wants versus staples that are needs, right? Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot are a big part of the discretionary index. Procter & Gamble, Coke, Pepsi, and tobacco are a big chunk of the staples. People basically... Always buy cigarettes, Coke, Pepsi, toilet paper. Uh, you have to have them, but you don't have to have a Tesla. So that's the idea. So when people, when consumers are confident in their circumstances, they buy discretionary companies uh, and the market moves higher. When consumer confidence kind of falls off, people tend to buy staples and the market tends to correct. So what is this chart telling us? We had this big rally. In tech, tech kind of falls into the Tesla category, right? Discretionary. We had a big rally in discretionary. So the, it's the ratio of discretionary to staples. So when the market's moving higher, more people are buying discretionary versus staples. Then at the, big, at the sort of February, the you can tell it from the S fund, and we're going to look at that chart next, but if you remember, the S fund was basically flat for, for, from February to pretty much where it is now. And so, as you'd expect, discretionary stocks were decreasing versus staples. So more people were buying, are buying staples when the ratio comes down. And so we more or less went sideways. The interesting thing about, 
about this chart is that September, right? So here's September. It wasn't a very big move. It went, it went up, right? So more people are buying or discretionary companies versus staples are, are moving higher, even in an environment when the overall index is moving down. That's, that's a sign of strength. And you also have this sort of smiley face, as J.C. Pretz likes to say. So if we get a breakout, you know, you can, we can draw the trend line here. If, if we get a breakout up here, the, the rally is continuing. And, and this looks like a, a really nice corrective pattern. It doesn't look like something that wants to break down. So it's a really, really good sign of strength. The next one, it's a little bit more complicated, but this chart, we got consumer staples versus the NASDAQ. So this, this piece here is consumer staples versus the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ is the tech index, right? So when, when the market's doing well, uh, consumer staples versus tech, so consumer staples is on top, so the, the ratio chart is, is coming down, right? So behind it here, we have the S fund. So the S fund was going up when the ratio of consumer staples to tech is going down. That should make sense. Then when we had COVID, everybody was buying consumer staples, nobody was buying tech, and tech tanked, the S fund for us, right? We hit the bottom in COVID, the S fund had a huge rally, which was very consistent with the ratio of consumer staples to tech. Interesting thing, again, on this chart. If consumer staples, if the, if the market was going to tank, we would expect like September to be, to be like that. You expect a lot more people to be buying consumer staples during September. And we're not seeing that. It's, it's another, again, it's another sign of strength. So people are not throwing in the towel on the rally. That's the bottom line. And that's consistent with the idea of a four leg and not the beginning of a major correction. What do you think about all that? I'll tell you if I turn my mic on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's it, what, what I hope people are getting uh, the takeaway here is that, again, we're always trying to kind of layer the data points, right? You can't just look at one thing. Um, you can, but you're going to have a lot less decision-making ability, right? Yeah. So what Jerry does for us when we do this analysis is instead of you having to dig into all these charts, what Jerry's doing is throwing some more data points your way so that you can start to feel a little more comfortable about what's going on in the market, right? Yep. So as I hear that, I listen, as I'm listening to that, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, okay, you know, the stress level can come down if you're looking at last week and all you see is red right. and you're like, oh my gosh, I stayed in and now I'm red. Okay, well, you're there. Right. Okay, you're there. There's nothing you can do about right. that. You, you didn't get out when we did, right? Okay, you're, you are where you, you are. are, where you are. Yep. But... Based on these data points that we're seeing, all this information, it's not a horrible thing, right? right, right. It looks like we're going to get an uptrend. And IBD is already saying, hey, it looks like we're yep. beginning it right. Yep. So the things are heading that direction. Now, I don't want people to take away from what I just said to, 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 to don't take that to say the market always goes up. Because there are downs, and you know we didn't get this down. We got, or we got, we were exposed to a lot less of it because yeah. we were kind of half in, half out. Yeah. Then we got all out, yep. right? Trying to keep as, 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 and for us, it's it's about exposure to the, you know, to the, the unknown, yeah. right? Risk. The risk when the risk level gets so high, and that's not always just because the market is tanking. It generally corresponds, but it's the signs that the risk level is just too high. Eh, we're out because it's not worth it. Yeah, it's it's easy to get back in if it's easy to get out or or to get back in if your mindset and your your sort of lines in the sand and and you can see what's probably coming down the road. Um, I mean, I'm I'm ready to get back in like as soon as right. the indicators are there to get back in. Yeah, and there was you know? no harm, no foul in, in, in easing our way out during this kind of unknown period during these corrections, right. just kind of letting it play out. 
it can, it can still correct. I mean, my my plan A really. I, I don't I don't think the correction the four leg is over. Um, I don't know, but I think it's a four leg. It's not like a major downturn. So um, I wouldn't be if I was in the stock funds right now, and I was I'm like, well, I'm down five percent off the off the high. Okay, you are where you are, so there's nothing you can do about it. And uh, we know that the fourth quarter historically is always really strong. So could you get out here and and take all your risk off the table and then wait for a confirmed uptrend? Sure, you could. Uh, could you just ride it out at this point? Pretty much knowing that it's a four leg and not a major down move? Yeah, you could do that too because you're seeing ABC corrections and not impulse moves down. Right. But if you don't have that come from, you, you're sort of swimming without a life jacket. And back to those other charts that you were showing us that are a little bit different than what we normally look at, what those charts are telling us is that a uh, high probability that we are in this kind of, you know, sideways waiting yeah. to go back up. Corre- corrective period, yeah. Exactly. So if it, so, what we, what I, again, just to reiterate, hopefully the folks watching this, puts you in a little bit more comfort level as to like where we're at. If you got out when we did, great. You know, if you're following along with us and you're a paid subscriber to, this, to the site, you know, you got an alert says we're, we're moving out, do it, you know, yep. make make your decision. If you got out when we did, you know, you're, you're safe. Yep. If you're still in, you're, you're, you're just, you know, you're, you took your losses, but your, your risk level isn't quite as high. So yep. the probability is that we are headed back up, but that doesn't always happen. So I just want to point out, it's, yeah. this isn't the oh, the market always goes up. No, it no, doesn't. No. <laughs> I mean, we're we're in the four the four leg corrective phase, yep. and then we'll we'll get a five leg, yep. uh, and then we'll get a correction that you don't want to be in. And that's what we're kind of. If if you guys have been watching the show for for weeks now, this is what we're constantly talking about. And it's not chicken little. The sky is falling. It's not the house is on fire. Nope. It's just the. It's what the information is telling what it us is. <laughs> is that we're here. There's gonna be a little up, right? And we want to take advantage of that. Yep. But what we're really watching out for is this next big fall. Right. And there we are. All right, let's move on into the next okay. ones. Hopefully, everybody got some value out of those charts. Hopefully. Now, these bonus charts, again, a reminder, it's, this has nothing really to do with TSP. <laughs> what they're more is kind of a learning tool for you guys to see charts that aren't always the S fund and the C fund and the I fund. Yep. And Jerry picks charts that, you know, we, we've been looking at anyway. And hopefully, you guys get a little bit more learning value. And if you're into, you know, playing with your brokerage account it gives you an idea of how you could do it with uh, other stock uh, other stocks or indexes right yep absolutely all right okay so bitcoin we have talked about before um this is bitcoin's bitcoin is progressing along it's in its actually bigger third wave but within that third wave it's moving up in five legs and so 2019, this bottom here was not the the all-time bottom in Bitcoin, but again, uh, this is actually a big two, and this one, when we get up to it, is going to be a big three. So within that three leg, it's progressing in five legs. One, two, three, four, and this is going to be five. So that's kind of the big picture it's in logarithmic uh, scale. And in terms of dollars, it's a lot of money, right? So I bought uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, not actual Bitcoin, but uh, back in here somewhere. I sold it up here somewhere. And I'm waiting for an opportunity to get back in. So that's the big picture of it. Here, this chart is kind of drilled down, right? We're looking at this part right here. Okay. So here we are at that low. We rallied up in, in uh, you can't really count five steps. I mean, I guess you can because the, uh, the five, if you count this as the five, it went one, two, three, four, five. So the three leg is not the shortest, so you could call that a five. And then A, B, C, which brought us back down to that 50% retracement level. So 50% retracement level means 
this move down here from 27,000 and change up to 52,000 was, you know, however many dollars that was. Half of that move went away on that 50% retracement. 50% retracement is not a Fibonacci number, actually, um, but it, it gets lumped into it because it's a very common area where we get support. And we got support here. We came down A, B, C, got support, came back up, rolled over, tested that support level again, so we got a double bottom. And then the last couple of days exploded higher. It was up almost 10% yesterday. So if you want to be, if you were really watching Bitcoin and you put a lot of confidence in that 50% retracement level and you saw this double bottom, you could have gotten in right there at the double bottom. A little bit more conservative way to do it is if you drew this trend line, as soon as price breaks above that trend line, so say your, your number there was 44,000, you would buy back in. It was tough to do because uh, price blew right through 44,000. Uh, it was either Thursday or Friday. We had a huge move up. So Bitcoin is definitely in rally mode at this point, I would say. Um, so again, we are, I'm looking for something like one. We just had the correction for two. Then we get a three, four, five. So Bitcoin is probably a, a pretty long-term uh, positive at this point. All right. The second one I wanted to do is Palantir. So Palantir is a data analytics software company. Uh, it's built its business with customers in the largest defense industry institutions in the U.S. So U.S. Army, Navy, CIA, companies like IBM, Amazon, Airbus, um, Recently, the company reported a 49% revenue growth for the first quarter in 2021. So 49% is a huge move higher. What the company does is deep, does basically AI deep research of all criminal, financial, medical, communication, and clandestine agency records on whatever target it's looking at. So the company's uh, tech helped locate Osama bin Laden in, in 2011 it's being used to trace COVID-19 infections, track medical supply chains, and even predict outbreaks in pandemic hot zones. It was founded by, among others, Peter Thiel. Um, Thiel was a co-founder of PayPal and was the first outside investor in Facebook. So what we have is a company that provides a critical service to federal government, military, and the biggest corporations in the U.S., founded by a guy that certainly has a track record of success. So that's kind of the backdrop of the company, right? So what does the chart look like? So this is what Palantir looked like when I bought it. Had a huge run up and a really nice saucer consolidation, corrective pattern. 2750, right? 2750 was the line. So this is what it looked like when I bought it. As soon as it crossed 2750, I bought it. And had huge volume on the upside. Okay. Just because you buy something that is a great company, that has great fundamentals, a founder that absolutely knows what he's doing, I, <laughs> it doesn't always work out the way you expect, which is why you have stop losses and you pay attention to what you're doing. So I bought Palantir. Let's see. I think it was this day right here. And I thought I was doing pretty good. I missed the initial run up. It came back, hit this trend line, and I bought it. Jumped big the next day. It was like a, I don't know, 10% move almost the following day, which was here, which ended up being the top. When I bought it on this day, my stop was down here at 26. If it got below that level, I was out. So I was really happy with my decision to buy it the day after I did because it moved much higher. The next day, 
not not too bad. It uh, it finished down on the day, but well off its uh, well off its lows, lows for the day. The next day came down, but that was still okay because I was still on my trend line. And then it collapsed the following day. So as soon as it hit twenty six, I was out, and it kept going lower. And there was a bunch of articles out this weekend about how Palantir tanked. So even though you you buy really really good companies. Um, with great fundamentals, great earnings, everything looks really positive. If you're trading, you have to have stops in. And so I took a little bit of a loss on Palantir. I might go back and buy it, buy it back later. But for right now, clearly, you don't want to be in Palantir. IBD Market Pulse column at the time had, uh, was listed as market under pressure when I bought Palantir. The best time uh, to buy stocks is when market pulse shows market in a confirmed uptrend and you're buying great stocks that are breaking out of clear base patterns. So I knew there was a risk when I bought the stock um, and uh, it was a good learning experience for me. So that's it for that. Okay. TSP Stock Funds 20-month weekly charts. So what does this correction look like if you're a, a weekly TSP uh, trader? We got the move down from COVID. We came back up in one. ABC is two, three. And this is the four that we're in right now. And then we're expecting to go higher. So if we look at it, in terms of the moving average and some of the technical indicators, we are still below, so, well, we're below the 10-week the moving average, which roughly corresponds to the 50-day moving average. So let me just zoom this in. Last week, the market was down, rallied back up, and couldn't get back above the 10-week moving average. This week, the market opened at the top of that red box, right at the 50-day or 10-week moving average, came down a little bit lower than last week's low. That is a, a bearish sign, right? That that's not um, that's not a great sign. It, it basically tells me that the correction is going to continue. We had a pretty good recovery on Friday, so it brought us off those lows back up to 43.57. But I don't think the correction's over yet. On a weekly basis, also, all the technical indicators have rolled over. So, don't know how low it's going to go, but on a weekly basis, it looks like we still have some room for price to move a little bit lower. S fund, same kind of deal. We've been talking about we've been in this flat consolidation for a long time. We're back and forth across the 50-day or 10-week moving average line. And for the past two weeks, we have not been able to get above the 10-week moving average line. Um, we did get a higher low this week. So this week's low was higher than last week's low, um, which is a positive sign. But again, that's certainly not enough for me to be buying the S-Fund at this point. I fund, same kind of deal, not as long a consolidation pattern as the S fund, but the I fund's been going sideways for a while here, and the last two weeks can't get back above its 10-week moving average line, and you got indicators rolling over pretty hard. So on a weekly basis, there's nothing here that, again, on a weekly basis, nothing here that says to get back into the stock funds. When you drill down to daily, things are much different, but weekly, that's where we are. F fund, uh, we've been talking about it for quite a while. F fund is definitely not the place to be. If you don't want to be in the stock funds, the G fund is the only option. The, the um, Two weeks ago, yeah, week before last, F fund closed below its 10-week moving average for the first time in quite a while. And then this week, you know, gap down quite a bit below it. <clears throat> Had a reversal, so, you know, didn't get... Uh, we didn't get as many losses on the on the F fund as we could have, but indicators also are 
not looking good. So on a weekly basis, I wouldn't be in the F fund either. Okay. If you're a member of the site, you definitely want to read this week's TSP update newsletter. Uh, we're going to take a really close look at the C fund for the past several months, look at some emerging patterns, some really interesting Fibonacci ratios, and specific downside price targets for the C fund in this four leg. So if you want to check that out and you're not a member, sign up at growmytsp.com. And not only is the, you know, the written analysis now, but Jerry does a short video to kind of walk and talk through that. And we've gotten a lot of great feedback. People like being able to, I, I like being able to hear you explain it rather than just read it. It's nice to be able to go back and reference things like in the, in the written, you know, version, yep. uh, a lot of good feedback. Also, uh, starting this week, this upcoming week, you guys will be seeing some information about our rates uh, increasing on our site. If you are a member, don't panic. <laughs> that doesn't impact you. Anybody that has joined over the last few years, whatever uh, rate you joined at, that never changes. Unless you cancel and come back and then whatever the rate is, then that's what, that's what the rate is. Uh, but as long as you're a current member, your, your rates never change. So I don't want anybody that's a current member to start stressing out. And so for those of you that are not current members and you're thinking about joining, uh, basically what we do is we normally give about a 30-day heads up that we're going to make a rate change. And the reason we do that, if you're on the fence or if you're thinking, hey, I kind of want to test this out, now's the time to do it, right? Because the rates are going to go up uh, pretty much on November 1st-ish, right around yep. there. Yep. Why are the rates going up? Well, we have plans in place over the next few months to keep adding a lot of features and a lot of tools and a lot of things. And, you know, with that comes expense. And so, we, yeah. you know, Infrastructure we, we get, we, we've got to cover it. That's the bottom line. We're, and, and, and the great thing is if you're already a member or if you jump on board before we do this rate increase, you're getting all that extra value yeah. at the same cost, yep. right? So no harm, no foul. That's why we try to give a, a huge window up, you know, of time for people to kind of make their decision before we make these kind of changes and then after that you know if you miss out on it you miss out on it yeah. but uh we're trying to give you guys all the tools all the education all the analysis that we can so you have everything you need in one place to make your decisions on how to manage your tsp um we can't find anywhere else that gives you so much in one place without having to go to 15 different sites right, right. right? i mean uh just watching the newsletter video alone even if you didn't read it uh, yeah. will keep you out of hot water in your TSP. Yep, so, sure. So uh, you guys will be seeing a lot more information over the you know next few weeks about the the, the, the rate increase and different features that are coming out, and we're looking forward to it. It's gonna, uh, this is always an exciting time of year for us because we're usually kind of getting geared up to add different things towards the end and the beginning of the yep. year, so it's great. All right, guys, All right. hope you guys have a great week. Had a great weekend, and we will see you again soon. Out of and here. are we Cue out? Cue music. Cue music. <laughs>